State Fullerton has done it. They've gone from 15 and 16, the champions of college baseball. Welcome to the 1,544 Miles to Omaha podcast, talking about the past, present, and future of Cal State Fullerton baseball. Here's a drive, deep right center. Back there, and Chamberlain has won it. A walk-off homer from the freshman Chamberlain, his first of the year. Cal State Fullerton has won the College World Series in 1995. One ball and one strike. Runners lead from second and third. The 1-1 chopped over the mound. The second baseman, Borgano's got it. Throws to first and no hitter for Colt Neesman. Here's your host, Dave Lamb. So, you alluded to it, so let's let's jump to it. Let's go to that night in Modesto where you get you get hit. Yeah, that's, man. Me and my wife and another couple um, went out to have Chinese food. About we had to be at the ballpark at about four, so we went about three three o'clock for a little Chinese, you know, next to the ballpark. And then the wives drop us off to the ballpark, and we get in the bus and we go forty five minutes to Modesto. And, you know, for a 7 o'clock game, you get there for, you know, batting practice all that. And I remember I, I was hurting right here. I had a scrape, you know, was sliding always head first. And it, they had to always tap, tap, you know, tape it up. It was getting worse in the last three, day, three days. And it was funny, the night before, I got four hits against Modesto. I had a great game, a really good game. So, and I'm psyched up, you know, we're going back to play. And, you know, they have uh, Donnie Hill, who's a play for the Angels in Oakland. Shortstop Mike Gallego from St. Louis. He's playing second base. And I played with him against UCLA. Um, Mickey Tellington, catcher. He's the one that was catching when I got hit. So we're there, and, and you know, it's just another game. It's the middle of the summer, our 67th game. Uh, I was leading the leading stolen bases. I had 52, halfway point. Um, I was hitting about 260. Still, you know, not getting over the hump. Hitting home runs, though. But it was weird. It was just a different kind of second baseman kind of guy. But I was doing good. I mean, I mean. I mean, for hitting 260, and I was still leading the whole league by 20 stolen bases, I was getting on, you know. So uh, a new pitcher was coming in named Ed Retzer from New York. You know, they, you know the guys on the teams, minor leagues, so if you see at night, who's this guy tonight? But you people get pulled up and dropped, and, and this guy, big guy throwing, he's all from big ass. You know, you're know, you sizing him up, you know, bullpen, and before you start the game, we're visitors. So I'm going to be the first one up. I come up. You know, like every other game, do my little routine, get up there, first pitch, strike, I take. The second pitch was a curveball. I, I take, and he calls it a strike. And I, you know, I'm not, I never believe in yelling at the umpires. I was a very humble guy, but I, when I did have a problem, I'm usually, I was right. I mean, it was a, it was outside strike. I'm going, oh, two, that's not a good way to start in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> so the third one, of course, you know, choke up, dig in. Dig in, two strikes, anything close, right? All of a sudden, I remember the pitch, and I just, I just turned my, I mean, I, I, I couldn't get all the way. I just like, like that. I just like flinched. It was that, you know, he threw 90, 91. He was clocked to hit me. Hit me, I was, oh my God, I fell down on the ground. And I remember my eyes were open, but it seemed like somebody was just pushing down on my, you know, my head. The helmet came off, you know, it was like halfway and people around me within five seconds and looking at me, saying, Sam, Sam, you're right. And I'm, I'm looking, I, I'm looking up and I'm going, I'm all right. But I was coming out, I was your son. And the, and Maury, no, because we always kid around. I was a kidder with everybody, you know. And Maury goes, Scrapper, you're not screwing around here, are you? I go, what are you, I was that. I mean, I'm, and I'm listening to myself. It's, my just, it's just gibberish. I had a loss. My, my speech was just gibberish. I'm trying to say, leave me alone. I'm okay. And they came out. I'll see what's your what's day. I go, oh my God. And they go, quiet. They're trying to be quiet. Call the ambulance. And, uh, you know, from that moment, they take me off the field. I just feel like a bad headache. I mean, like somebody's pushing it on me. You know, like, oh my God. But I was well, coherent. You know, I was looking around. You know, I got another ambulance going to the doctor's hospital. I get to the, the emergency and the neuro, they do the MRI, the scariest thing in the world. I've been in one of them. I'm 21 years old. I'm in this thing all the way in, and they're talking to you. Can you hear it? I'm going, what is going on? All of a sudden, I, the, the, and I'm thinking, like, 
will I be able to play tomorrow? I mean, what am I going to do in the hospital? They're going to admit me. And the neurologist, Dr. George Bingham, 68-year-old guy, very a typical neurosurgeon, white hair, glasses, hands can't you know, squeeze his hands because that's his life, and says, um, you have two, one and a half, two blood clots in the brain. And he's explained to me and my wife at the time. Then we're going to see overnight. We're going to stay here tonight and see if it dissolves, see if it can dissolve. And we'll take x-rays in the morning at about 6. And I'm trying to communicate. I, I, I remember my wife said, just be quiet, because I couldn't. Yeah. Um, it's a foreign language at yeah. this time. Oh, my God, yes. And um, I, I go into my hospital room, and I remember laying here, and I started throwing up with the Chinese food, you know, after getting hit in the head was three hours earlier. And then I remember the picture came to my room on the, on the door. I was laying in my, by myself in my own room. And Wayne Rudolph used to play at Cassidy Fulton my freshman year. He played that field for us. Great guy. I looked up to him. He helped me. He played for Oakland. So him, he brought in, and they went like this. And my wife said, they said hi. And I went this, you know, with a thumb up. You know, like, no problem. No resentment. Bought the game. Mm-hmm. So I sit there in the morning. I remember just being out of it. You know, in the morning they woke me up and they took me for x-rays and they came back and the doctor says, we have to do emergency brain surgery. You have three club clots now. And we have to relieve the pain. And what I didn't know that they they were telling my wife and then my mom and dad when they got here that I had a 50% chance to make it through the operation. And if I did make it through the operation, I, I mean, don't think about ever playing again, but you, you'd be lucky to walk and you might not, you lost your speech. So I was... I think, I'm glad they didn't tell me that because you know yeah. you don't want to hear that. So, so um, I remember the two guys. I never forget it because they wheeled me into the elevator. Two guys about 23 years old that work at the hospital, just doing this everyday job. They do this a hundred times a day, right? And they're talking, laughing a little bit, and I'm in the elevator, knowing I'm going to brain surgery. You know, I'm going like I couldn't really communicate, but I remember I was responding like, "Wow, this is crazy!" And then they got me in the typical room, scared the hell. It was five or six doctors and nurses and steel and lights and I mean this is this is the top of the night and I found out later it's the only um, hospital in our league for all the cities we play in that had a trauma department so I got hit in the right place I tell that when I speak you would you would think Modesto of yes. all places Modesto, only if I didn't anywhere else was. if I was in Reno I'd have to get flown to <clears> Modesto. <throat> so wow. time was at the instance so I mean God was watching me and I mean I got hit the right place out of all the places, it's yeah. the only city in the whole California league that. So I'm in the operation, and I, you know, I just remember them turning me over, and they started to, you know, put me under. And then, you, you know, you don't know, you, you know, you're gonna die, and you wait, I never forget it. I'm in, in recovery, and they're hitting my face. I look up, I, I, I look up like I'm alive. Thank God. First of all, and there's six people. Dave, right in front of me, two nurses, guys, I mean, like this, and I remember the pain. I I was trying to, to point, I had to go to the bathroom. I mean, it was like my kidney was going to bust. I never had this pain. And I'm like this with all bandages all over my head, and I'm trying to say, uh, you know, I'm trying, I was, you know, and I don't, can't talk. And somebody goes, I think he's, he's seizing, and they hold my hands down. Now, Dave, I mean, I tell this when I speak, it's funny. I go, oh, oh, and I'm trying, no, no, and I find, and then somebody goes, I think he has to go to the bathroom, ah, uh, ah, uh, and they, and I remember they, two, three people put me all the way down, and I didn't know about catheters. I'm a 21 year old, very naive young man, and I remember going back there, and I'm, and I'm peeing. I'm going, oh my god, this is great, but I didn't care. I wasn't embarrassed because who cares now? But then that was my awakening <laughs> oh, no. to this brain operation. So then they wheel me into intensive care. I'm there for three days. My mom and dad just gets to the hospital after my brain operation. They tell him them all the news. So I'm sitting there with monitors all over me. But I knew at that moment, I just knew. You know, my speech was not working, and I was hurting. But I just knew it, that sense of I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I know what's going on. I know you're Dave. I know that's Dad. I know that. I, I'm laughing. I can make a joke out of something like, you know what I'm saying? At that moment, and they said I'd be in the hospital three, four months, and I walked out in 17 days. So the miracle started right then. That miracle ha- happened right at that time. I was a very fortunate young man at that time. 
and I, I really do believe that in a in a way besides kind of person I was and the intensity I have and the drive that I have that never given up you know that helped me through that operation and even the things that Augie taught me to never give up all that baseball analogies that's life life all that grind that you're talking about for 78 79 season all that was in my body that never left me and that learning many lessons from 17 to that moment 21 from my dad my Augie but all together that, that saved my life because you know you can you can get depressed you can look the other way you can you know what I'm saying check out and um, it got me stronger and I was I was so very blessed and I've always said that every day since that's happened that's 41 years ago so you said when when you initially get hit and you know everybody comes out and you're trying to think to yourself oh my gosh you know am I going to be able to play tomorrow yeah so you come out of this, and after we get past the nature calls, right. are you still thinking, am I ever going to play baseball? Yeah. Or And you're feeling, you know, I'm going to be okay, but okay is not being a professional baseball player again. That level, right. So what, what, were, what was going through your mind of, what, um, what, do, what, do, what do I have in front of me? Well, I mean, I was in the hospital like this 17 days, and I was going back every other day for therapy occupational therapy speech therapy and of course i talking to my doctors and stuff and, and they say you're not going to be i mean i mean without you know giving me bad news but saying you know you got too much of a risk you have to play ball again you're not going to be able to do this this your motor skills and this. i mean you're going to you have to get hit you're dead uh because it's too, it's, too, it's too weak you know it's only part in the body that does it strong heal back stronger if you break your arm it's the bones are stronger when they heal back the head doesn't work that way so they give me all that news. But, you know, I wasn't there. I just wanted to get better. But I, I, I said, I, in, my, in my heart, I, I'd like to play. I want to play again. You know, I don't care. You know, you might, you know, like, like I'm in denial or something. You know, people looking at you. know they like, yeah, just get better. Don't, yeah, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll talk about baseball. You know, you give them looks from my, I mean, everybody, you know. But nobody's going to just tell me, you're never going to play ever. You're not. Nobody did that. But they were kind of being nice and casual about, like, you know, Try to just walk and talk and get feeling back and, you know, let's live. You're alive. But I, every day in the hospital, the day I walked out, I tell a story after 17, 18 days. I say, I'm playing again. i got to come back. And I never forget it. I had my skull cap on, stitches still in. I had my robe on, and I was at home. And my wife was doing something. And I told her, come outside in the backyard. I was staying with my uncle there in Newman. It was about 20 minutes from Modesto. I come outside and I had a baseball. I go, come right here. And she was right where you're at right now. And I got the ball and I went. And she caught it. Playing catch, right? Technically. And we're talking about five. Three feet. Five, three feet yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. And she caught it. And she kind of talked it back. And I was, you know, I could walk like, I call it because the boom movie was that was called the E.T. The E.T. Chuffle. I was, you know, I, I saw you walk around there, you know. And I, had, and I had the ball. I caught it. You know, and I. So I put it down. I play catch today. I marked it down in a journal. I play uh, catch 20 days after my, my hit. So that helped me. You know, I used a lot of that through the recovery till it was six months, seven months, eight months. Then I'm, then I'm at Cal State Fullerton and we come back. Me and my wife were having problems at that time. And, and when she left, she left right about um, in 81 after about six months after my operation separated so I lost my career my my health my wife I'm 21 no money you know I, and you know what I'm saying you're, I'm back to 78 mm -hmm. 77 but even worse um, so you know what I'm saying so all them lessons that I learned you know that's the grind now you're talking about grind now it's time wow so I, so I turn all that around saying I'm gonna show everybody I can come back you know even the ex I mean you know, screw every I'm you know I'm you know I'm going to coach a little baseball. I got my first coaching job at JB Garn Grow when Dykstra was there. I need Dykstra on them. I go, I'm going to coach a little bit here, and then I'm going to wait for Milwaukee. And Milwaukee was saying, are you kidding? I go, I want to come back to spring training. I want to try something. And there, you know, the liability was up the roof. So I had to sign all these papers before I went to the spring training. And they wanted me to come just for a couple, like four or five days. 
and then go back. I mean, that was our typical. I was on my own, basically, like a, or I roamed around and did and take ground balls. And everybody in spring training, like, are you crazy? It's been 11 months. Well, you know, what are you doing? 11